The labor employed in the process of resource extraction in African nations does not employ high technology and is therefore labor intensive. In that process, the total free energy of society becomes negative as man hours per unit of production increases. Nations like the United States cheapen the cost of goods in their country by exporting production to countries where the cost of that production was relatively cheaper, otherwise known as slave labor. However, this advanced nation is now faced with the quagmire of competing with the cheaper cost in developing countries and is forced to reduce its own labor costs and capital investments. Similarly, investments into productive and potentially productive labor as a whole collapses. A disproportionate layer of the population of the advanced nation assimilates into the service economy and massive debts accrue as the real income level of society collapses. The rate of depreciation of physical society coincides with the rate of accumulation of debt and fictitious financial values leading to a hyperinflationary breakdown. What appears to be a decrease in cost is actually a swindle. The cost of produce good is taken out of the living standard of the population. So money is saved, but your population, your base of labor, is murdered. Everyone loses. The process succeeds in impoverishing the populations of the developed sector and condemning the developing sector to perpetual underdevelopment. The productive powers of labor, the skill level and technology employed by your workforce, is directly determined by the level of infrastructure development of your society, and this should determine the cost of the finished good. Globalization shifts production from a higher technologically productive zone to a lower one, leading to a collapse in per capita and per square kilometer productivity. Therefore, the drop in this potential population density if continued to a point lower than the actual existing population, creates the condition for a rapid collapse in human population. If you want to have slaves who do as they're told and who do not invent, then you can treat people like cattle and you can have globalization. There's not much required for these types of technologies in terms of processing of the raw materials. You just dig a hole you get them out and you and you ship them to your own countries what what profit is being seemingly gained by the resource extraction the cheap resource extraction in africa is being taken directly out of the human population there instead of using the human being for his creative potential you're using the human being now for what you would normally use an animal for globalization is a moral failure Years after nuclear power was sabotaged by radical environmentalism, the policy of turning valuable food crops into engine fuel crops or biofuels became a so-called solution to the energy crisis. Look at the monopoly over major world feedstock crops, such as corn, soybean, but also biofuels crops by companies like Cargill and Monsanto. Several countries have been relegated to the simple status of producing cash crops as their own populations lie starving in the streets. In Africa, the destruction of calorie consumption and lack of comprehensive sanitation system created a condition where the collective immune system of society collapsed. A whole society was left susceptible to disease, leading to the resurgence of old and the emergence of new epidemics and pandemics. Species that could otherwise play a potentially productive symbiotic role in society, such as bacteria and fungi, became parasitic. By 1981, the first cases of what would become known as Advanced Immune Deficiency Syndrome, or AIDS, was detected when alarming rates of pneumatic conditions and rare cancers affected populations in New York and California. Today, the human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV, a retroviral infection that precedes AIDS, has spread around the world. One of the earliest known cases of this type of retrovirus was found in Sub-Saharan Africa. 
where conditions of life in colonies were so horrendous that the actual threshold of immune systems collapsed, perhaps giving way to the transfer of such a virus from animal to man. Now, with over 33 million reported HIV cases worldwide, though an estimated 67% of these cases exist in sub-Saharan Africa, it has reached the status of pandemic. Any attempt to maintain impoverished regions of the planet and control disease through mass immunization has proven absolutely ineffective. Kissinger, uh, because uh, in one of his uh, National Security Council memos, uh, the way he talked in terms of Africa's resources and, and so forth, clearly indicated that he, is, uh, he would be happy to see Africa depopulated and the United States control the mineral resources, of the, the, the vast mineral resources of that continent. Then later, in 1975-76, Henry Kissinger and others specified a policy that Africa was to be, was, the population was to be reduced. That no development of Africa's population would be permitted. And that policy has been continued. That policy of rape and mass murder has been continued in the present day. A declassified policy document, authored by Secretary of State Henry Kissinger, revealed publicly what had already been known to some. This policy of genocide was intentional. In 1974, Henry Kissinger implemented National Security Study Memorandum 200. The study explicitly cites the consumption of scarce natural resources by a growing population in poor countries as a security threat. It opposes the development of these countries and recommends a policy of population reduction, more appropriately termed genocide. As a result of this and the continued environmental policy of anti-industrialization, black Africa has taken on a new meaning. ago, our sun in a state of infancy spinning violently created disks of plasma that eventually formed into the orbits of our solar system. The result of the polarized fusion process occurring within the sun at this time gave birth to the various chemical elements. All of the elements in the Earth's crust can be attributed to cosmic phenomena. Plant life concentrates these elements, but is also itself organized by solar radiation in the form of photosynthesis. The Russian-Ukrainian scientist V.I. Vernatsky saw clearly the role that not only living processes, but also human cognitive forces played in this upward evolutionary development of our Earth and solar system. Vernatsky conceived of three distinct yet interacting phase spaces. The region devoid of life, the lithosphere, the domain of living matter and its products, the biosphere, 
which organizes and bounds the lithosphere, and the most powerful phase space of them all, 